Oh yeah, sexy biscuits. Nice. To Lord Boys Post 1975 and welcome to a Wednesday vlog that's not on a Wednesday. Um, two things. One, uh, uh, how cool is this? And two, my camera is really rapidly dying. It's a very odd experience to try and gauge the shot you're taking while it keeps flipping between up and down, like up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. It still seems to record okay, but yeah, and it's a shame because I've tried to replace this exact model because I know it works, you know, for, well, what I like to make, but it's discontinued. Anyway, that's by the way. Um, <clears throat> I do apologise. I've never missed a Wednesday vlog before. I may have missed a day once before, so, you know, so ignore that statement. Um, I've got two blocked ears. That might be why I'm shouting. Oh, I'll rain it down a little bit. Uh, a bit under the weather, and since I couldn't hear anything, and they hurt like bastards, Sorry, Windy Pops. Back on the Pepsi Max. I didn't get up. <clears throat> now, you've read the title. Uh, the British comics I loved and read as a kid. Uh, this has come from somewhere. And no, this does not cover the Beano, the Dandy, uh, Buster, Wizard and Chips, all those good things, because they are hands down my favourite comics of my childhood. But I've talked about them on many, many, many <clears throat> excuse me, occasions. I think it's safe to say a starting point for most people in the United Kingdom was two sort of camps. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is I've currently been going through finding all my um, Transformer UK graphic novels. I had the actual independent issues and still have some of them from when I was a kid. Uh, Transformers UK was unique from the American or the US Transformers, both by Marvel in the sense that they featured characters that the US largely neglected after the movie. <clears throat> and there was a reason they did this. But anyway, back to what I was talking about. There's two camps of comics that, you know, ignoring the Beano and the Dandy and things like that, that British people, myself and my friends got into, my brothers. And that would be the sort of um, the, the Eagles, the, um, the, the, the Battles, the, um, the 2000 ADs primarily, absolutely adore that. You know, sort of the people who made those and Marvel UK. Because Marvel UK, they, they did everything. And before, you know, US Comics had that label that stuck on the front to give it a UK price to start appearing in news agents in the sort of late 80s, all your superhero stuff, you know, uh, all your mainstream sort of toy uh, translations were done by Marvel. And this was the first place, you know, I got into comics, and that would be Transformers, because I love Transformers, got them for Christmas and stuff like that. Didn't understand the politics of it. There's a brilliant foreword in these books that explains it, by the way. But yeah, loved it. I uh, always thought the artwork was a bit poor. It kind of newsprinty looked like, even though it wasn't printed on newsprint. I started reading at the very early 80s. It was weekly. I think, what was it, 32p, 25p? Excuse me, Windy Pops. Oh, Pepti Max, you're a bastard. Um, and my brother got it as well. And it was funny because we would notice distinct dis differences in the art style. And what basically happened was they started off just printing the, um, the US one. But since the US one was monthly and Transformers UK was weekly, they went through pretty much most of the, uh, you know, they caught up with the US material. So then um, they started using the movie characters because they noticed that the US weren't using them. <clears throat> and that's when it got amazing stuff like, you know, Legacy of Junicron, Time Wars, um, <clears throat> Target 2006, and absolutely fantastic. I love this period of comics. And then it obviously led into my, um, you know, because it was Marvel and the average city, that led me to buying Action Force, <clears throat> excuse me, which was obviously the US, UK version of G.I. Joe, and was later renamed, renamed G.I. Joe. I absolutely adored that, especially the, they did the same thing, they ran out of US material, but they did the, uh, the Snake Eyes origin, and Storm Shadow origin, I think it was called the Snake Eyes trilogy, that was absolutely fantastic. But that ran out after 50 issues, and became Action Force Monthly, which shrunk to the US style, and I loved that as well, but I didn't like the self-contained story, I wanted a story arc going on and on and on. <clears throat> then that got cancelled and then ended up because of the UK comics the only half of the comic I guess to save material because initially it was US stuff was um, the actual main sort of title like Transformers second half would be a backup story and I love this as well because Transformers did um, Guardians of the Galaxy Hercules Machine Man <clears throat> 
uh, Iron Man of 2020. It was all places where I got to discover, you know, before I started buying the, the, the US equivalents of all these amazing sort of Marvel stories. But then, and it was renamed G.I. Joe, became the backup strip in Transformers, and I was... I was happy as a pig as shit. And then this, this brought me on to another one of uh, Marvel UK, which was uh, <clears throat> Thundercats. And I absolutely love that. Same again. They ran out of material and started doing their own. I think this was a theme going for all sort of Marvel UK comics. Backup strip as well. I preferred the backup strip to the Thundercats strip. The first one in that series. It was how I became aware or introduced to the original story arc of um, Power Pack. Oh, I love that. And I love, uh, you know, Thundercats. And it was brilliant, again, so forth and so on. It led me to discover <clears throat> all these other, really got a gacky throw, I apologise, all these other sort of licensed um, Marvel UK versions of toys uh, that were sort of reprinting US material. And that's how I discovered the real Ghostbusters, which wasn't as witty and wry, you know, and double themed as the cartoon, or, you know, because there were a great level of sarcasm in it coming from the Venkman character. It was more killified, but I absolutely loved that. And so Marvel UK was an absolute massive, massive part of my childhood. I've still got so much of it, but particularly Transformers has never left me as being one of my favourite comic, comics as a kid. And I do, when I when I collect the graphic novels, I do primarily try and collect the um, Transformers UK stuff. It's got reprint now in the States, and I would really, really recommend it if you only read the 80s um, US stuff. <clears throat> Then, obviously, the other camp I talked about was uh, 2000D, you know, the creative Judge Dredd, Rogue Trooper, Judge Anderson, Judge Death, you know, um, ABC Warriors, or Roadbusters as it was initially called. That was a very, very adult comic. And again, that was weekly, started in 1977. Judge Dredd only kicked in the second issue. Still running, Dredd's in real time. I mentioned a lot of this in my Dredd video, but I came across a bunch of those in a charity shop and bought them, knew nothing about this cartoon. And I could piece together a rough story. <clears throat> and I fell in love with this world. I absolutely fell in love with the world of Mega City One. Again, these were very, very, you know, Tyranny Rex. These were really, really adult stories. And one of the greatest stories ever that I would really recommend, but I don't know where you would get it because the guy who wrote it fell out with the, the publishers. And that would be Zenith, Phases 1 to 7, which is a very British tape, take, sorry, on superheroes. Again, really, really adult elements of pop culture from the 60s and stuff like that, breeding programs, fantastic. Uh, look it up on Amazon. I'll see if I can find a picture, I might not be able to, of what the books go for now. They're ridiculous because it will never get another reprint but that i managed to collect all those issues independently from other junk shops and stores when we were on holiday that you know specialized in antiques and would always have little piles of comics here and there but 2018 <clears throat> just ah uh, that, that that led me to the spin-off uh, dread the magazine which had some of the greatest stories ever you know like uh, song of the surfer and things like that with chopper I, and all of this was really, really, really... I apologise if you can hear the rain, but I'm loving it. I love the sound of heavy rain. Yeah, really, really adult. Maybe a bit too early for me to read as a kid. Uh, and that led me to read um, Eagle. Eagle obviously st first started in the 50s, Dan Dare. That was a more child version, but I love that. Sadly, that's been cancelled now. Um, yeah, absolutely, obviously, all those Marvel ones have loved Eagle. Dan Dare, uh, Computer Warrior, which, as a kid who just got his spectrum, that was amazing, because a kid got pulled into a computer, uh, into games that were actually being released at the time by US Gold, such as Metrocross and stuff like that. So I absolutely love that, you know, and uh, you had Doom Lord in that. They actually started off like those little girls' magazines back in the day, where it was photo stories with speech bubbles and stuff like that. You had Kid Cops. Um, <clears throat> What was the other one? The Daredevil bloke. Ah, oh, I can't remember who had a mask on because he burnt his face. But yeah, I mean, far more kidified than um, obviously 2000 AD. And something was part and parcel of all these comics back then. When one got cancelled, it got absorbed into another one and you would have like 2000 AD, then Tornado underneath, like Eagle Absorb Battle. And then eventually after a month or so, a couple of months, so they just get rid of that and keep the strips that were the most popular. That was a weird thing as well, but yeah, Battle was another one I read in this camp, which was um, kind of war stories for boys, and they were the first people before Marvel did Action Force to license the initial run of Action Force characters before they just brought in all the US ones. The UK ones originally weren't even jointed, and then they brought in the US ones, and it was a... See, all these magazines were strip-based. Even to... Uh, sorry, Transformers to a degree was half and half, as I mentioned, but it was like four or five pages of different characters, which I always liked, which was very unheard of compared to US comics at the time. Only a few did it, like Marvel Comics Presents and stuff like that. 
<clears throat> but yeah, so I actually started reading Battle because it had Action Force and it was the colour, you only had like one or two colour pages on the front and typically you'd have a colour page on the back. But I loved all of these. I absolutely loved it. They shaped my childhood, you know, like maybe fall in love with reading. Granted, I still read more graphic novels and comics now than I do books. But if it wasn't for these, I doubt I'd even read anything. And such was the excitement of it for me as a kid that we ordered, we ordered them. You used to be able to do this. Order them from your local post office. And I used to write there every Saturday morning. I used to get up early, ride there, pick up the comics, ride home, give the ones to my brother because he got Transformers as well. And it was a big deal for me on a Saturday. Get a 10p mix up and stuff like that. But the, these were the comics I absolutely loved, you know, um, as a kid, before I discovered, you know, all the US ones, you know, the smaller print ones. Well, you know, because, you know, I collect them as well. And yeah, it definitely, if it wasn't for these, I wouldn't have even, you know, led on to, on to them. But I do, particularly Transformers UK, have such a, you know, fond regards and high, high you know, memories um, of this period and absolutely loved it. So, you know, what were the comics you read as a kid? More so, if you're from the UK, I'd like to know your memories and experiences of British comics, you know, outside of, you know, the Beano and the Dandy and things like that. Were Marvel Comics as big a deal? For, oh, Spider-Man and Zoids! That was another one. Sadly, only ran for 50 issues. Um, yeah. <clears throat> were, were you um, sort of um, um, a, a bigger fan of Marvel Comics as I was? Oh, one more thing just popped in there. Death's Head. Death's Head was originally in the green suit. was um, originally a full-size Transformer equivalent robot. People always wondered how he got shrunk down before he became Death's Head 2. How he got shrunk down. He showed up and had a battle, if you will, in Doctor Who magazine with the then Sylvester McCoy Doctor who pulled a trick on him and a device and shrunk him. Never forgotten that. Sadly, Transformer uh, magazine, Transformer, Doctor Who magazine, the, the the back issues go for an absolute bomb now. But yeah, so well, you know, what were the comics you had and you loved it as a kid? And were you, you know, Marvel for bringing in all these things like the toys and that? Were they as big a deal for you as a kid as they were for me? Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you later.